we're going to talk about cross products today, and those are used to find whether or not vectors in three-dimensional space are actually perpendicular. So as you can see in the two drawings, I have two vectors in a flat plane. So in this case over here, we have these two black vectors on a flat horizontal plane, if you will, and then this perpendicular vector to that plane coming up on the z-axis. Likewise here, here's a flat plane in the beige with two vectors a and b, and then there's a vector perpendicular to that plane coming up and out of the page, if you will, um, and that represents a cross product. Now, in order to find a cross product of two vectors, we actually take and find the determinant of the vectors a and b with their unit vectors i, j, and k. Now, our book gives us a couple of different ways to find a cross product. I'm not a big fan of, of one of the ways, so I'm not going to even go over that. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the way I prefer to do it. What I would like you guys to do is take the i vector and the j vector and copy those down and then copy the columns associated with them next. And you probably did this last year, I would imagine, in algebra 2. In order to take and find the cross product, we take and multiply all the diagonals to the right, and then all the diagonals to the left, and we take the product of each of those, and in the ones going to the right, we add those products, and in the left, we take and subtract those products. Now, in this case, we're going to end up with a new vector because we have this i, j, and k, and a, b, or a and b are going to be numbers, if you will. So we'll get some new vector in i, j, k form. So let's go ahead and do that with an example problem. Here are two vectors that form a plane, and we're going to find the vector that's perpendicular to the plane made by the connection of these two vectors. So what I'll do is I'll take and go I, J, K. A is first, so I put that on top. Three, one, two. B is second, that goes on bottom, negative four, one, two. Copy the first two columns, so I have I, J once again. Three, negative four, J, is 1 and 1, and then I'm going to take the product of this diagonal, so that's 2i, product of this diagonal, that's negative 8j, product of this diagonal, that's positive 3k. Now I've done all my full diagonals, going in the positive direction, now I'm going to do my diagonals going in the negative direction. I'm going to subtract all these. Notice, this is negative 4k, but if I subtract a negative 4k, I get a positive 4k. I multiply in this direction, I get 2i, but I take the opposite of that, and I get negative 2i. And then, I take this last diagonal, which is positive 6j, so Subtracting, I get negative 6j. So now I add like terms. I notice I have an i here and an i here. They're opposites, so I get 0i. My j is here and here, which gives me a negative 14j. And my k is here and here, which gives me a positive 7 Okay, how do I know that this vector, which is 0, negative 14, and 7, is perpendicular to either one of these two? Well, I can simply take and do a dot product. If I go, let's call this uh, A cross B. A cross B. 
dot vector a should equal zero if they're perpendicular. So I take product of the x's, which is zero times three, product of the y's, which is one times negative 14, and the product of the k's, which is two times seven, add them all up and hopefully I get zero, and I do. So that is perpendicular. And I could do the same with the b vector and end up with a product of zero as well. Some properties of cross products are as follows. Anytime you take a cross of a vector in itself, you end up with zero. If you take and do a commutative property on a cross product, you get the opposite of that actual cross product. If I take a scalar multiple and cross two vectors, then that's the same as taking that scalar multiple times the first vector and then crossing it to the second. Likewise, I could take and multiply that scalar by the second vector and cross it with the first, but I can't distribute it through, if you will. Okay. The only thing I can distribute is the cross of the sum of two vectors. So I could take u cross v plus u cross w. Some geometric properties of these things, if I take the cross of the two, we know that uh, the cross is the perpendicular vector to both those two vectors. Take the magnitude of the cross, and that's equivalent to the product of the two magnitudes times the sine of theta. So if I want to find an angle between, this is a little bit different than the angle between vectors in two space or three space because we've got a sine involved rather than a cosine. We know that the magnitude of u cross v is going to determine the area of a parallelogram made up of u and v being two adjacent sides of that parallelogram. And then if the cross is equal to zero, that's only going to ever be true if the two vectors are parallel. So let's take and do a problem. If I want to take and find the cross of 4a times b, I'm going to take and multiply 4 times a first. So 4 times vector a is going to be negative 8 and 16 and 24. That's a new vector. And I'll cross these guys. So I have i, j, and k again. And I have negative 8, 16, 24, 1, 8, negative 1, copy. First two columns, negative 8, 1, 16, and 8. So going through and doing our diagonal multiplications, we have this first diagonal being negative 16i, second diagonal being 24j, third diagonal being negative 64k, and now I'll go the opposite directions, which means I'm going to subtract the remaining products. I've got positive 16k, which subtracting goes to a negative 16k. I have positive 192i, which is negative 192i, after I subtract. And then I've got a positive 8j, which makes a negative 8j. Once again, we'll combine our like terms. In doing so, here's an i here, here's an i here, it gets me a negative, oops, sorry, that's not an i, an i here, which gets me, what, negative 208. i, find my j's, here's a j, here's a j, gives me a positive 16j, and finally with the k's, I have a negative, looks like 80. Okay, and that is equal to 4a cross b. That's my new vector.
So next we're going to find the area of this parallelogram and we know that one corner is at P1 and there are adjacent sides of P1, P2 and P1, P3. Notice what I've given you is there the coordinates of the vertices in 3D space, but I haven't found the actual vectors. So I need to find the actual vector P1, P2. And I do that by taking my tip minus tail. P2 is tip, so I have 1 minus 0, 2 plus 3, 1 minus 1, which is going to be equal to a 1, a 5, and a 0. And then I'm going to have P1, P3. Again, tip minus tail. So I have 2, whoops, minus 0. I have 4 plus 3. And I have negative 3 minus 1. Which gets me a 2, a 7, and a negative 4. And then I'm going to, first of all, find the cross product. So I have my i, j, and k for the two vectors of 1, 5, 0, 2, 7, and negative 4. We'll copy these once again. Go through the same routine. Put negative 20 i plus 0, j plus 7, k. Oops. Those are all the products in the positive direction. Negative direction, that positive 10, which gives me a negative 10k. There's 0i, and there's a negative 4j, which makes a positive 4j. Let's get our like terms. i is in i's, is negative 20i. J and J gives us 4J. And then our K term is a negative 3. So we have the vector negative 20, 4, and negative 3 as our cross product. But we want to find area. So we need to take the magnitude of the cross. So that's just negative 20 squared plus 4 squared plus negative 3 squared. And we're going to square, square root all that. And we end up getting approximately 20.54 square units. pretty much all we've got today. I think this is actually lesson 53. So make sure you do your lesson summary and your mind math lab and we'll get back to you tomorrow. Take care.